All right, I recently made a video talking about the brand new film look creator effect in DaVinci Resolve 19. If you haven't seen that video yet, definitely go and check it out because it is pretty cool. And towards the end of that video, I mentioned that I've heard some people saying that this new film look creator is going to replace plugins like Dehancer. And I also said that while I agree with certain arguments supporting that statement, I don't really think that's going to happen just yet. So in this one, I wanted to talk about why that is and kind of do a review of Dehancer after using it for a while. And this video isn't sponsored by Dehancer in any way, and it's not a video that they asked me to make. I picked it up for myself a while back and have been using it for around a year. So I'm free to say whatever I want, but I do have a discount code that you can use on their website if you decide to pick it up for yourself. Now, I want to start by saying that I think a lot lot of people comparing the film look creator to Dehancer have a major misconception about what each of them is actually meant for. Because on the surface, both of them are supposed to give you a way to give your footage the film look, but they do it in very different ways. The built-in resolve effect is much more of a freestyle tool that gives you control over a few different settings that you can mess around with to give your footage characteristics that are typically seen in stuff that's been shot on film. So things like grain, bloom, halation, split toning, that sort of stuff. And on the other hand, while Dehancer gives you similar, if not the same settings, it is a film emulation plugin. And with all of those things, it also gives you the ability to choose different specific film stocks and print films to combine them with. That's not something that you can do with the current version of the film look creator. Maybe in future updates, they'll add that option, but as of right now, it's not there. So if you want your footage to look like it was shot on a Kodak Vision 3 250D and then printed onto a Kodak 2383 print film, Dehancer is probably the better option of the two. And that's not to say that you can't get the same look out of the built-in Resolve film look effect. It's just not going to be the same workflow to get you there. And unless you know what you're trying to do, it might be much harder to get your footage to look that way than it would be with Dehancer. But that kind of leads to one of the arguments that I could potentially see myself agreeing with in favor of the statement that the new film look creator could be better for some people. And it's the question of ease of use. So at some point last year, the team that made Dehancer reached out to me and offered to let me try out their plugin and to potentially make a video about it if I liked it. I found it pretty interesting, but I decided to hold off on making a video about it back then because I wasn't really sure if I would continue to use it long term. And I set a rule for myself to only talk about products that I genuinely believe in. So it didn't feel right to recommend it to anyone when I wasn't sure if I really liked it. And one of the main reasons for that was that it felt kind of overwhelming at first. So at the time when I got a test license for the plugin, you had to set up pretty much all of the settings for grain, halation, bloom, split toning, and everything else manually. And along with that, there is such a huge variety of film stocks that all look different on their own, and then you can combine them with a few print film emulations, which gives you even more different looks. But because I've never shot anything on film, I didn't really know what exactly I was trying to do with all of those settings. I wasn't sure what my footage was supposed to look like when using any of the film stock or print film presets, and it was just a lot of trial and error. Basically, it took a really long time and it was really difficult to actually get a look that I was happy with. But a little while after the trial was over, I decided to give Dehancer another shot and I picked it up for myself and started trying to learn how it works better. And luckily, eventually, there was an update that added presets for a lot of the settings that you had to set up manually before, which made things easier. 
But even then, so far, I still think that it is way quicker and easier to get a look that I am happy with out of the built-in film look creator in Resolve. All of the options that you've got in the built-in effect feel much more simplified and beginner friendly without being overly basic and limiting. And for some people, I can definitely see that being a compelling reason to use the film look creator over Dehancer. But the fact that the Resolve effect feels more simplified brings up something else. The question of which is more versatile. And that's really gonna depend on what sort of workflow you've got. If you're after a specific film look, then by far, I think that the answer to that one right now is Dehancer. I think that if you take the time to learn how it works, Dehancer will give you a much more specific result that someone can look at and go, okay, this looks like it was shot on Kodak Vision 3 250D or Portra 800 or whatever. But if you're after just general film look characteristics, then the film look creator is kind of hard to beat considering how much more simplified it is while still giving you a bunch of really useful controls. And again, out of the two, the film look effect is the one that I feel can give you a great looking result with less time and effort. That said, it's also important to mention that Dehancer has a photo plugin that you can use to give your photos the film look and there's also an iOS Dehancer app. So in terms of versatility, that could be something that some people care about. Also, we can't not talk about the price. And out of the two, Dehancer is obviously the more expensive one, especially if you go with the lifetime license for Dehancer Pro. There are also subscription options for time and you can buy separate elements from Dehancer Pro as standalone plugins. But if you've got Resolve Studio, the film look creator is gonna be included in that along with with pretty much everything else in Resolve Studio. And if you don't have Studio yet, it is gonna be cheaper than a lifetime Dehancer Pro license. And that might kind of sound like the final nail in the coffin for Dehancer, but I still don't think it's that simple. I've said it in videos before, and I'm gonna say it again. Just like with pretty much any other paid plugin or piece of gear that I've talked about, whether or not the price for something is fair really depends on what you need it for. If if you're just going to be using something for personal projects or for fun, if there is a cheaper or free alternative, it probably won't make sense for you to spend money on an expensive option. Unless you're rich, in which case it doesn't matter and you won't even care about the price at all. But if you are planning on using that paid thing enough times for client work that you will be charging money for and it either A gives you a better result or B makes your workflow and your life easier, then it's probably worth getting it. Because ideally, it's gonna end up paying for itself in like one or two projects, and then you get to own it for free. So if you work on paid client projects where you need the sort of functionality that Dehancer gives you, I don't think that the price should be the deciding factor in whether you get it or not. So between the film look creator and Dehancer, which is better? I don't know. I think that the answer you're looking for is somewhere early in this video where I talked about what sort of workflows either one might be better for. And do I think that Dehancer is dead or do I think that it's still worth it? Well, I definitely don't think that it's dead just yet. I think Dehancer is gonna be just fine for now. And about it being worth it, as someone who's in the fortunate position to have access to both and can choose which one to pick based on the project, I would say that Dehancer is worth it for me. But again, that that is not a decision that I can make for you. Go back to the point in this video where I talked about which is more versatile, think about which type of workflow sounds more like yours, watch some more reviews, and most importantly, don't just spend the money because someone said that you should get it. Not me, not anyone else. Buy it if you need it and don't if you don't. All right, if you've got any questions, drop them below, but that is all I got. Later.